My name is Odaline de la Martinez, although a lot of people call me Chachi. I am the artistic director of the 5th London Festival of American Music, taking place between the 7th and the 14th of November of 2014, this year. I believe that the Slavery Trilogy is probably the first Afro-Cuban set of operas on the subject of slavery. The Crossing, which is part two of the opera trilogy, was commissioned by the Sophie Newcomb Institute of Tulane University in New Orleans, and it was premiered last year in April. I chose the subject of slavery for two reasons, really. First, I was approached by Joan Anim Addo, the librettist. I really welcomed her idea because, of course, I was born in Cuba. I was brought up surrounded by Afro-Cuban music. And so I remember going to bed, literally hearing Afro-Cuban drums and waking up when it stopped in the middle of the night. So for me, it was like visiting my childhood and my whole background all over again. The reason Joan Arimaro contacted me is because she heard her music and she realized that I wasn't just writing music in an Afro-Cuban style. It was something that was coming innately from within. In part two, you've got the two soloists, Imoinda and Oronuko. Imoinda is Nadine Mortimer Smith. Oronuko is John Colin Gianti. And the choir, of course, is Eclectic Voices, who are joined by a gospel choir. The whole thing is being conducted by Scott Stroman, who is an American composer who's been living in London for a long time, and, uh, of course, Lontano, which is the uh, string orchestra and percussion. The story of Imoinda has to do with the fact that Imoinda and Pris Orinuko meet. They fall madly in love. The crossing takes part the middle way, in other words, the passage when all the slaves were put in ships and brought over to the Americas. The story was Afra Ben. Afra Ben is a 17th century novelist, the first British novelist and the first woman who was a novelist. Her most famous piece of work was Orunoko, which was a hit. As soon as people read it, it was a real hit. It's actually amazing that the first British novel dealt with the subject of slavery. The instrumentation of the opera is um, string orchestra and percussion, with a whole range of Cuban-style percussion instruments, from guirido to claves, maracas, bongos, all kinds of Cuban percussion. It's a combination of tonal harmony, which means you can hear the chords as they have. It combines a lot of uh, what they call percussion polyphony, I divide the group, the chorus, into three groups to create this kind of polyphony. But other times, I use another technique of African music, which is uh, chorus and response. Sometimes it's one single voice from the choir, sometimes it's imoinda. But it's this idea of chorus and response, which you find in a lot of West African music and ended up in Cuba as well. Nadine Mortimer Smith, who is the soprano singing the imoinda role, is a wonderful singer. She has an amazing background. She began as a gospel singer, then she had a rock group, then she discovered she had an opera voice. The Crossing is going to be performed at the Actress Church Covent Garden, which is actually called St. Paul's Church. Uh, it's going to be performed on the 7th of November of this year to actually celebrate the opening of the festival. And it also celebrates my 65th birthday. I set up the Festival of American Music in 2006 because in this country, and probably in Europe, most people only know a few names of American composers. But of course, the collection of American composers is tremendous. There's a lot of variety in geography, in gender. We include a lot of women composers, and you don't get a lot of that necessarily in this country. There are seven concerts, and in those seven concerts, there's 27 premieres, three world premieres, and the rest are UK premieres. Before each concert, from 7.15 to 7.45, we're having Meet the Composers and Meet the Artists. Many American composers are coming over, and they're going to be able to talk about their music. I've been conducting since I was little. I've been dancing and singing and conducting since I was little. And I remember as a little kid watching television and saying, Oh, I saw somebody conducting an orchestra. I remember saying, Oh, I want to do that. However, I didn't do it for a long time because I was told, not by my family, but by various people, that women don't conduct. And it's only when I came to this country that I realized, since I was kind of challenging establishment anyway, I might as well do what I wanted. And so I started conducting. 
In 2001, my father died, and he was a man who always did what he thought he could do. He always did his duty. And for me, it was very sad that when he finally retired, he died. And that's when I decided that I was going to do only what I wanted. And then I decided completely to dedicate myself to three things I really believed in. One was contemporary music, British and American and other composers. The other one was women composers. And the third one was, of course, Latin American classical music. And I never knew why until I realized recently I'm Latin American, I'm a woman, and I'm a contemporary composer. And then the light shone.